best. <laughs> Russell Brand, Britain's sexiest and most controversial comic, was always destined for stardom. From his acting debut in a school production of Bugsy Malone, he broke into Hollywood stealing scenes in the smash hit comedies Bedtime Stories and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Hailed as the most exciting comedian of his generation, he's picked up awards like Stand Up Comedian of the Year, Best TV Performer and Shagger of the Year three years running. Since then, this cunning linguist has hosted the MTV Video Music Awards, written a number one best-selling autobiography and released his own DVD. Now it's Australia's turn to catch him live and scandalous. Ah, uh, please welcome Russell Brand! Look at you. I didn't think anyone could come on this show and top the attire of these two gentlemen. You have done it in space. One of us has already taken our hat off to you, and I do the same. So. <laughs> yes, you look rather underdressed, the pair of you. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't even make an effort. Welcome. You landed, uh, what, only a few hours ago. Would that be right? Yeah. I mean, it's correct, but it ain't right, cos I'm exhausted. <laughs> You must be. Now, how do you go with, with jet lag and things like that, landing in a foreign country? Well, it is, Rove. I ain't allowed to take drugs no more, so, like, jet lag's the closest I get to a buzz. <laughs> do you, now, do you, have, do you have problems with, like... We're notorious for customs and things like that. I've seen the TV shows with the cameras where they yeah. wait at custom stops for people. How do you find it when you get it's in? It's not easy, mate. People think I look suspicious. <laughs> I'm getting bothered by some beagle when I got here today. Yes. <laughs> Lovely little thing it was, but I thought it smelt so much of its own ass. <laughs> How it could detect drugs is a mystery to me. Do you know the thing is, though, most of those dogs are there for fruit. That's what their biggest... They're fruit dogs. Yeah, it's more than don't, don't bring... Yeah, bring heroin if you want, but just... <laughs> Yeah, if you hide it in an apple, they'll get you. I wish I'd known that before I come. <laughs> Very difficult to get that apple into my bottom. <laughs> you want that sip of water? <laughs> now, I, I, uh, I did uh, enjoy uh, seeing your uh, award accolades. Now, Shagger of the Year, you have won three years running. Yeah. Do they, have, they announced, <laughs> have they announced this year's yet? I've only just got the last one, mate. Like, it's only recently it's announced around Christmas, so I've only just received my most recent shagging award. Please don't put any more pressure on me. <laughs> Since I've just got that trophy, I can't go out there and start shagging yet. Yes, I'm you can. I'm exhausted. Does it? <laughs> I'm just a bit weird because the thumb's pointing right at me. <laughs> <laughs> Once the thumb has decided... <laughs> well, and all this talk of having spooning on the guys... He has a reputation. Be careful, <laughs> that. I, I want to know, Russell, who awards Shagger of the Year? I mean, is it do they get a backlog of ladies who've spent some sexy time with you, or uh, <laughs> what? How do you get it? I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. This accolade is rather arbitrary. There is <laughs> no real credit in it, and frankly, I'm rather embarrassed. <laughs> would be very proud if I had an award like that. Well, I d must say, Rovi. I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. But no, I no, I, of course, enjoy sexual intercourse as it is my biological imperative as a human being. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when my mum, like, when I win an award, I ring my mum and go, I've won an award, mum. Oh, what is it, darling? It's shagger of the year. <laughs> and she has to pretend to be proud. I think you should be, though. I think, you know, I would think if I was a parent and I had a child and they had done very well in the at bedroom shagging. at shagging, <laughs> I would enough. say, good on you. Yeah, but you don't want your mother to envisage you expertly shagging a series of women. <laughs> it's the expertly part that actually sells it for me. <laughs> Now, you've actually, and again, not wanting to sound negative in any way, shape or form, but you've also, prior to this, been in, in rehab for sex, which I find fascinating. Yeah, it ain't, though, mate. Cos uh, what it is, is there's no sex allowed while you're in there. <laughs> is they there... frown on it. Yeah, but how do they, how do they monitor it? Is there, is there like, a, a set of rules? Yeah. How do they implement it? They won't let you... Right, here's what's not allowed in Sexual Addiction Rehabilitation Centre. 
Sex. That's, that's number one. Yeah. You do that, you're out. <laughs> Masturbation. Thinking sexy thoughts. <laughs> thinking sexy thoughts. If you thought, think sexy thought, you have to go and tell someone, just say, excuse me, I was just thinking something else, so kinky. And say, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? And then you say, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> but it's, it's a cold turkey. But with cigarettes, you know, they wean you off to, you know, two a day and then a patch and it goes from there. So. Why don't they adopt that type of method with, I don't know... I wish I knew, Andy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm tackling the problem of addiction, I will come to you and your buccaneer chum. <laughs> <laughs> because, frankly, it was an ordeal. Because <laughs> just in our, in, our, in our sex rehab centre, it's a bit more relaxed. I bet <laughs> yeah. 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 Look at better. the state of your fucking oh, <laughs> You don't try to smuggle fruit into the sex rehab. You're fine. Right, yeah. Well, Here they lot. just send you on a boat over, over the Tasmanian <laughs> yeah. rehab. You want to go cold turkey, we can take you on a boat. <laughs> yeah, of course, well, the first uh, most people would have heard of you as, uh, here in Australia would have been through uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That was, uh, how was that as an experience for you? Big film, uh, feature film, Hollywood uh, breakthrough, that kind of thing. It's nice. Yeah? <laughs> it's nice to be in a film, mate, but you're in Hawaii and uh, after a while the relentless beauty of paradise, <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> how, did the, how did the Americans take to you? They like old Russ, that's who I am. Yeah. Uh, they, think I'm, they think I'm nice on account of, you know, I'm quite English and that and I carry on and I'm a bit cheeky. They're very pleasant towards me, they give me some money. <laughs> so were they, were they aware of you when you, when you came on set? Because I, I've... Uh... They were, they see me coming, they went, here he is, look. <laughs> It could Watch be him. someone He's else. Do some be... acting. Because I've heard that. Because um, uh, being a fan of the movie, I've seen the DVD, and they say that the character was pretty much as you walked into the audition. It was just you being you, and they said, "Well, that's that's got to be the character." That's right. The character was supposed to be very, very different. He was supposed to be an author, a sexually frustrated author. I went in there thusly. They said, "Can you play a sexually frustrated author?" I merely grinned. <laughs> They said, well, you can be in this film if you want to. And I said, I would like that. And uh, <laughs> then, that, then that's what's happened. They changed it so that it was, like, either it's an insult to my inability to act or very flattering that they just like me as I am. I don't know which yet. I take the flattering. It's take like the flattery. Thing. Take it as a compliment. If you, we have the choice of how to perceive reality, which we clearly do, if there is no objective truth, then why not allow our perception to be coloured by endless beauty? Why should... There's enough <laughs> tyranny and pain in the world. Why not just see relentless this joy, right? Say a beagle comes near you, start <laughs> sniffing you, you could think, well, that could be because of that apple I've got in my colon. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be because I'm a real Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> uh, Russell, are you ready for your final five? I don't know. You can do it. I have absolute faith in you. Oh! That's what happens. If someone does that to me now, I go like that. You know what? I wasn't ready. It's where I'm a gangster. I wasn't ready for it. When you grow up in a Compton, Los Angeles, you learn pretty quickly that if someone does that, to go like that. Is there a difference between that and that, though? Yes, there is. And if you do that to Snoop Dogg, he'll shoot you. Ah. <laughs> I, wasn't I wasn't ready for it. I hadn't braced. And when you did it, I punched I myself in the face. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. That is as close as we'll ever get to a drive-by, as we are gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, uh, number five. Have you ever been to an orgy? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoyable? It's not nice because uh, you know how people say never eat the peanuts at a bar, it'll have 20 types of peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat any snack at an orgy. <laughs> Yeah. There's a fact sheet after the show. <laughs> Number four, you've eaten ants. What do they taste like? Nothing. Like, Nothing, but they've got that acidity. I was a child. Don't, like, it's not on the way in. When I was a tiny, <laughs> tiny child and I was all unhappy, I sometimes, to get attention, would eat an ant. I regret it now and I'd like to apologise to the ant community. <laughs> I'm vegetarian now. <laughs> number, th number three, finish this sentence. The fastest way to a woman's heart is... Just go through the ribcage with a knife. <laughs> hey! No, no. Just through joy and the recognition of their eternal beauty. <laughs> number two, what's the biggest lie you've ever told? Lies? Oh, well done. Oh! Oh, God. <gasps> Some bad ones. I once claimed to be a Native American to impress a girl. Uh, another time, I claimed to have the HIV virus to get time off work. They're both <laughs> <the same> guys. <laughs>
Did you get the time off work? Yeah, I did, but they got a bit suspicious. They was fed up because it was like a language school, and I kept having it off with the students. They said, "You want to stop doing that? Maybe." <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't true, and I mean no disrespect. <laughs> Number one, uh, finally, your visual question. What's the first thing you think of when you see this? <laughs> oh. Well, I feel a little bit sorry for it. <laughs> it looks a bit confused. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually smuggled the heroin in with an apple. <laughs> Well, there we go. Well, Russell is touring his stand-up show, Scandalous. All shows are sold out except this Saturday at the Palais in Melbourne. Be sure to catch him. Very funny man. Pleasure to have him on, Russell Cheers, Brand, mate. everybody. Thank you very much for coming in.